Hello, my lovely opportunists. My name is Winter. I'm the editor and player character of Charity. I just wanted to give everyone a quick reminder to follow our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Thank you for tuning back in and we hope you enjoy. Hi everybody, I'm Corey, I'm the Dungeon Master, I'm here with Group 1, say hi everybody. Hello! Normally we'd introduce each other, but um, for most of you who are going to be listening to this, you've probably already listened to all of our other episodes, so you know Rodeo, you know Red, you know Jasper, and you know Winter. So we're going to bring down the suspense a little bit today, Uh, instead of a game, we're going to be going over... Well, practically everything Group One's been doing. Uh, kind of recapping ourselves for the listeners, and I don't know, like maybe speculations, maybe just chatter about what's going on before next week, before things really start, because we're at kind of a really nice place in the arc. Um, let's see, we've got. Two members who've been around since the start of Group One. Hey, Winter. Hey, oh, high five. <laughs> We've survived. Here for the long haul. <laughs> if you just want to kind of maybe summarize or kind of give a rough summarization of what happened between basically the start and Groggy Hill? Yeah, sure. Um, so we started in Hinderland. We moved forward trying to keep this, it was like a caravan safe as we're going. We still had a couple people in the party that we don't have anymore. That were, that was fun. Um, we chased the caravan off semi-accidentally. Like, not, not me and Edda specifically, but... <laughs> The party. Our party the members chased them off. Um, yeah. We kept going. We got. We found a bear. Uh, a rat got sacrificed to the bear. Davily bear. <laughs> <laughs> um, that fucking bear almost killed me. You survive. You die. Yeah, exactly. Thick <laughs> art out of it. Listen, listen. Yeah. Um. In dealing with the bear, we found a guy that the bear had mauled to death, and I'm still salty about this, but Sebastian took the clothes out of the dead guy's pack, and I really didn't like that. Uh, that was the time. That, I think that it's time for Maggie to uh, take over for a second. Um, I mean, after that, like, it was really tense within the group because, like, Sebastian was the type of person that was very full of himself and very, like, you know, I, my way or the highway kind of guy. And uh, that didn't work well with the group because nine times out of ten, his way is the highway was a bad choice for all. And um, so there's that. And um, so we went to. Uh, Groggy Hill, and then we, um, and we, you know, we also had Sakari at the time, who was my quote unquote bodyguard. Um, that was a time. I believe huh? too. You still had Palace with you. Oh yeah, Palace. Yeah. Why that? Well, we're going way back. Sorry, I totally yeah. forgot about Palace. Sorry, Palace. Well, Palace has been a while. Uh, we still remember her. She's had. Uh, She's had an accident. We're hoping she's doing a lot better. But, yeah. Uh, hmm. you know, yeah. Sometimes it happens in life. So exactly. Um. So there's yeah, Palace, and then we were wandering through Groggy Hill, and we met Cole, who um we went to we went and helped him with his ghost problem, which was unfortunately his wife. I was getting there. <laughs> I was getting there. <laughs> Well, we burned down his house because his wife was attached to it. So we had to do it. 
I mean, Actually, I think, well, I think to the, be fair, the, the house got burnt down because during a fight, Maggie saw a candle and was like, giant tree creature, let's catch it on fire. Listen, she she got the job done. It did. It got the job done. And to we be fair, <laughs> to be fair, I don't think Cole got the bad luck out of all of this, to be honest. Um, no, I think Cole's pretty doing, doing, well, I mean, uh, um, as good as he can be right now, at least. Anyways, um, that's <laughs> good. Yeah. Cause that's now we're getting into like today's and then mm-hmm. Cole, what's going on with Cole now. Mm-hmm. So, so let's, let's take it back a step. Let's go back down Sorry. to uh, Groggy Hill. Um, let's see. I think the one thing that Palace did while she was there that I'd like to add in is is I think the first time anybody's run into uh, Jace and his guild. Mm-hmm. And um, I think th- there was a bit of surprise at how quickly they just kind of packed up and went when they heard that there was a group that needed help. Yeah. I think that was really the only thing I, I kind of really have in groggy hill that we did i think i think there was an attempt by sebastian as well to try to hide himself incognito and and start a rumor about himself yeah he, he was, was yeah like three bears by himself or something yeah he was trying to make himself bigger than he was yeah, even I though think, he wasn't that I think great the town kind of saw through that there was i think there was just a bad role on that one that day mm-hmm. Um, sorry, I'm recapping when it's still yours, so I'm sorry. Continue. No, you're okay. <laughs> you're filling in the holes that I forget. It's fine. Um, but yeah, we went and did all of that. Um, trying to remember after that, but I mean, basically, you know, I think the next thing I remember ahead. after that is going to Graydon, picking up Edmund. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. I was like, I know, I'm trying to remember where exactly we picked up. I've got Edmund. the map open in front of me, and I'm like following the pink line. Go, okay. This oh, that's right. You should. Uh, here, that's a here. smart thing to do. <laughs> that's, a, that's, you know what? That's a logical thing to do. Wow. Smarticles. Anyways. <laughs> um, but Not like Graydon. following the bouncing ball. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Except follow the flaming candle that lights people on fire. Anyways. <laughs> um, follow the flaming half midget halfling caught on fire by the angry tiefling. What? Maybe. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> we can roll back and fill in some things because we have a member who's been a diehard listener since like day one. Yeah, I pretty much. I am an avid fan. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, we we uh we hire our fans. You just Fuck yeah. gotta be make sure that you uh, keep an eye out for the openings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put on roll twenty every now and then. Well, I was a I was a Ooh. fan too when I started. <laughs> yeah, you were a huge fan of Maggie. I remember. Yeah, she so were nervous. What do you mean was. Oh yeah, no! Listen, this is before you guys joined group two, and you were still listening. You yeah, because I, I remember Max was nervous as fuck to even message me because I was Maggie and I was like, bro, what the mm-hmm. fuck? I'm, I was like, bro, it's fine. Still, it's fine. <laughs> Just fucking message me. <laughs> and then he did and I was like, he's like, oh, I'm such a huge fan of Maggie. I love her. And I was like, thanks. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> All right, we're getting off track again. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so right it's now, okay we're to remember between rifled out. I just kind of random shots. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry, Winter. You were saying, yeah. Um, I was saying right now we're just somewhere between Graydon and Whitegate for where we're. Mommy, a beat you ass. You chewing her mic? Yeah, but that was when we really started to see differently from Zakari and all that stuff because she was risking our lives basically for some treasure. Oh yeah, that was well, time. Hold on, we we got to roll back here because what what exactly was it that we needed to get to for, um, because you had mentioned something he had done to, 
Edmund. Everett. Everett. Yeah. E- or Everett? Yeah, it was oh, Everett. Everett. Yeah, because he uh He did things to Edmund too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like adopted Gosh, him and then just nice. left. Yeah, well so, that's later on. So let's let, let's pull back so that we've got a solid at least one tail. Where did we stop at with Maggie? Um, um I was basically because Winter hadn't told us like we had found the, what part did we find the cave because that was right after we came from Graydon because we adopted Edmund well, the, and Graydon. The cave was definitely after Graydon and after mm-hmm. Whitegate. You yeah. didn't you didn't find the cave until after Whitegate, so we've got a bit of ways to deal with that. You guys found the cave after you um met Everett because I remember. Oh well, yeah, that's were- what I was saying. And after you guys them. saved Sakari from your lieutenant. Yeah. Because oh, right. she had gone you guys kidnapped someone. Yeah. Sakari yeah. had been kidnapped. Um, and your ghostly friend, uh, well, your little ghost light friend, came to uh, help you guys out in your moment of need. It's been a while since you guys have seen your little witch light fa- friend. Yeah. Um. And then when we found the cave, that was when we, like I was saying, we were um, really starting to question Sakari. But then we found this really evil man down there, chained up. Apparently he had eaten a god. That was the time. We all didn't want to fucking mess with him. And for some reason, Sakari and Sebastian were like, let's poke the bear. It's like, no, stop. And then that's when we also had a very touching moment between Maggie and in charity because we found something of her parents down there. Yes. And that was a time. Holy fuck. Yeah. I believe she found like a fragment. Of and, uh, I remember correctly. Or what, what was it? The item that you found? We found a baby blanket. Yeah. Her ba- a part of her baby blanket. Yeah. I remember that. That made me cry. I have the image still. <laughs> so after we took out um, Cantu. Oh, fucking um, Cantu. Lieutenant Thank Cantu. You. Um, you guys tied her up and you felt the best thing to do was to take her to Whitegate, turn her in, right? Yep. Because she had kidnapped um, Sakari against her will, and it was just against the law. Hello, Gigi. Sorry, yeah. my cat is like right up in my face right now. Hello, hello. Now, was Everett before or after White Gate? Uh, before. Oh that, yeah, that was remember, it. Yep. He didn't want to come into White Gate with us, so it was literally on that trip while we had Cantu with us because we we're like, oh, we can't just skip White Gate because we have to get rid of this bitch, but we can't. Leave him yeah. to do his own thing because we want to help him. And then that time we did um, something a little risky. We left Sebastian alone with him. <laughs> yeah, that was... No, I was with him. Well, I think Maggie was still coming into her own at that point. She didn't really... She I tried to get in really... between them. Oh, that is true. Yes, she did. And uh, I just think their argument... They they kind of fueled themselves through the argument. Yeah, they both. It was Maggie was trying to be trying. Tr- Maggie, being the good-hearted soul she is, was trying to see the good in Sebastian by also, but also seeing that Sebastian was wrong. But like she was trying to tell Sebastian to be like that. The, his he has consequences for his actions. Like he can't be that rude. He can't be that mean. So she stepped in between, but it got out of hand, and then Charity thankfully showed up at the at the nick of time to stop everything, because Maggie wasn't going to be able to stop the both of them. <laughs> well, no, because Everett had left by the time Charity was back. If I remember not, like me as a character, as the player, mm-hmm. knowing what happened, but Charity's just mm-hmm. like, "What's going on? Where would it go? What the fuck did you do?" Oh yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. I'm sorry. It might be interesting to see who might be leading charge for the Eris army. Oh boy. <laughs> so um there might see be some um kind of fun little tidbits for us there to to look forward to. Just a little tidbit for the the listeners if they're excited about that at all. Cuz I guarantee yeah, wait. 
Yeah, because I guarantee your guys' goal right now is to get to the capital, find out what's going on, and see if you can figure this out diplomatically, I believe, correct? That's uh, no. Maggie's goal. I thought our, That's I thought Maggie's our goal. goal. Was, our first goal was to get to the capital and get Maggie's parents better. Well, yeah. Yeah. I meant, like, ultimate, ultimate, ultimate goal. Um, I guess, yeah, the real question would be, now do you guys have any way of curing her? Do you have a potion? Did you... We're still trying to find the rest of the ingredients. No, I got it from uh, Father Fox. Yep. Is so now we potion? have to... Oh, I'll that's right. Potion. That's right. You yeah, right. You right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you right. For me before we get to the, to the end part. But um, let's see. So in the intermediate... So after Whitegate, what made that big change? Because I can see right here, and for the, the those cave. who are listening... Yeah, there's a huge marker where you can just see this huge left turn. On yeah, like a fucking hairpin. <laughs> yeah, so what happened was we went onward and then we got here, we found the cave, then we decided to turn around and that we could try to find Everett later because this was more important because we got the crystal. I think, hang on. I'm also going through our, our episode list. Um, we got attacked by a troll, I think? No, I don't know whether it was a troll. I see here one of us got sick. Uh, we got Nia. Nia joined the podcast then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was Nia. Nia was the one who got sick. I remember that. Yeah. Yep, because he was going through his quote unquote magical pure beauty. Yeah, yes. which there was we weird because that was really cool because it just kind of. Disappeared after the God Eater kind of visited. Mm. Again. Yeah. You know, when you got a god stuck in his body. Yep. <laughs> That's not Good the times worst thing that people all, have all around. Yeah, and that oh, was when uh that was when I Maggie know. when people were trying to say this were, were were also saying that Maggie and Sebastian were really cute and I was like, please no. They're well, it was the first time he had really shown emotion for someone else so like oh i'm really concerned about this child not just oh i have to deal with the kid now <laughs> so like it was yeah it was no and maggie sweet. maggie well yeah and maggie really started to fill the role of kind of like the motherly figure besides charity for edmund she really like submitted herself to that role because she wanted to make sure he was okay yeah i think actually wasn't wasn't Edmund actually sick when you guys were arguing with Sebastian and Everett? Because he had cast suggestion to make him forget that he was sick. Then immediately yeah. fumbled the spell, which brought the pain back to Edmund, but he didn't care after that. You guys just continued on the road. No, exactly, because, because the very next episode is when... Uh... Everett leaves, and I remember we were very upset because he had literally, like, turned off the spell on Edmund so that he could cast a spell on Everett. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he shrank him and everything like that. It was a time. It was a time. <laughs> but then we headed mostly east. We we trekked across, like, most of the Poke Plains here, and I'm I'm talking Poke Plains aren't an easy walk all together from one side to the other. It's almost 300 to 400 miles. And you guys covered a fair distance of about 165, maybe more. Just mm-hmm. getting to Naughty Ram. Yeah. Yep. And in there, uh, shit, now I know. Sebastian left and we got Winters yep. and Tensel in. Yes. Um, oh, Winters and Tensel. Oh, sorry. What what happened they with all- Victor? This is like way back in the beginning, but oh I, I Jesus, this is, this is I'm never going to be able. <laughs> we can we can that down. Well, well let's no. be honest here. For those who are listening, Victor kind of fell through the cracks, and and there's a reason for this. Because yeah. Victor was kind of a thing before the romance between um, Aeson and Maggie was a big thing because uh, Rodeo had joined the podcast for a while. Aeson hadn't existed yet. 
So, so it's not thank not you. Dating. So the way I see it is, you know, it's okay to have a crush, but it, you know, maybe it's just a fleeting crush. Maybe that she's got somebody better she's actually looking for. But I mean, there was a spark there. I'm not going to deny that for her character. I think, but I think it was just a fun time. She wasn't serious. He wasn't serious. And so well, it just kind of. And like you said, this was before Max even came into the podcast. Like yeah. I was like you and I had planned things for Maggie and Vic and, and him at the time. Yeah. We and were stuff doing like a couple that. Of yeah. That's, and then, you know, yeah. Things roll. That's the, that's the way of the dice. So like for those who are listening, no, we don't have a set script. <laughs> This is the biggest like example of we definitely do not have a set script. Things just are winged most of the time as far as it goes. Well, all the time. The only time we don't wing it is when we, we know a character's feeling something and we just kind of request, hey, do you think I could have a moment to do this? And I think that's the most we really schedule anything. Mm -hmm. And we don't even know when that occurs. So, in that time, you guys got Tinsel, and you guys got Winters. Jesus, I can't believe I, I blanked on that, because I was also thinking about the name of Jericho, their donkey. Oh, yeah, Jericho the donko. Donko. Yeah. Donkey. I meant to say donkey, and I said donko. Jesus. Good donko. During that travel, you guys kind of bumped into a very disturbing thing for the first time, which was a demon. A nightly flying demon. Those are always fun, you know. Yeah, and he ended up actually harming Jericho for a short bit. And it kind of made him sore, but eventually he was going to get better. You guys made your way back to Nottingham and were trying to figure out the next move because you didn't have too much longer to get to Croca before this prophecy from the crystal that you received. Oh yeah, the fucking crystal. God damn it. Zagari had had her her items the entire time. It was just a surprise that she decided to pull it out. Yeah, and then Maggie had a freaking meltdown because she burned books about it, which normally if she wasn't so frantic, she wouldn't have done. But she was burning books, man. She was like, "Uh uh-uh, I gotta see all of this. You rolled a natural 20 on that one, didn't you? Like, throwing a Yeah, because yeah, I was rolling, like, 10s and 11s, and then I was like, I'm going to throw books in the fire, nat 20. I was like, well, this goes against everything I stand for, but all right. So, um, Nottingham. Let's, let's fast forward to Nottingham. Um, it was still you. It was still Tinsel, Winters. Um, did... Yeah, because this is when we actually, unfortunately, said goodbye to Nia. You yeah. You guys arrived in Nottingham and heard a few things. You were trying to find a way to get to Croker early because a big storm had just set in. Mm-hmm. And it was really making travel difficult. And so you guys kind of sought a few ways. And thanks to Winters. Uh, Winters was paired with who that day? Winters was paired with who that day? He was always yeah. with Tensel. Tensel? So yeah, he's th- those two were always found, together. Or was it Winter who found the old man? Or Charity? Who found the old man? I think Tensel did. Yeah. Yeah, somebody had found information that the old man was working on something old that's been around forever, but... Yeah, um, it was Tensel. Yeah. He had uh, promised you guys money if you would test something, but it was also something that could get you guys to Croca in time. So I think everybody just kind of took a shot on it in desperation of trying to hope to help people. And you guys went yeah. through this magical teleportation that zapped you all the way to Croca. Um, and in that unfortunate, sad time, Neo was sent to the Feywilds. And I was um, put in a sewer. You were put in a sewer? <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, was when, when we said goodbye to Nia. But it was no, also- we, we were on, we were trying to do the puzzle bugs and her hair was on fire. That was a time. Oh, yeah. Nobody puts Nia, our baby, in the sewers. Uh, oh, the DM did. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to just cover all of it because it's just, there was so much. We have like what, 60 something episodes now? Oh, God, yeah. 64 episodes. And that's about, it's majority is group. Well, not a, it's a slight majority is group one because group one did what, 10 episodes before group two did their first? Yeah. Give roughly. or take. Maybe more. I don't know. I think it's actually about ten at this point because there have been a couple of weeks where we've had like doubles or triples of group two. Um, but I think if I'm looking at the two lists of group one and group two's episodes, it's about the same now. Yeah. I remember for a while when I was in group two, uh, around the holidays, group one was having issues with being able to get together because of work schedules and stuff and group two pulled a bunch of Two. Yeah, we did a lot of double. We did a whole group two month, actually. Yeah, that was. It rough. was a rough time. That was a rough time for all of us. So is today, which is why we're trying to prep everything for the big crescendo. Oh, mm-hmm. Which is why we're doing these questions to fill everybody in, get them all caught up, and get them to the point before all the exciting stuff happens. I feel. Well, we still got a lot of downtime too, so we don't even know how long this will last. It's good to eat another year before another ending because it's taken what almost a year and a half Aww. now Aww. for the podcast. The three, it. the three moms for Edmund. We are so close to two years, guys. Yeah, we, yeah, we are. Podcast in July. We're two months away from have been recording for two years. Can I just say? Um, can I just say that that picture makes uh, Edmund look like Charlie Brown, and it gives me life. <laughs> I didn't realize that before. It kind of does. So I do love that picture. I like a Meg just this was chilling. One my, this was I literally one of my favorite that. pictures to do. I think I'm turning that into my background. I was just about to say the same thing. Maggie's just chilling on the sand, like, hey. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. Once we hit Croca. What do we do? We went straight to looking at all the strange slime in the sewers because Maggie was freaking out. Um, Can you blame me? And then we found Edmund, who had been there for a week before us. And Apparently. And he was not happy oh, about that. You know what we forgot? Before, before all of this, Group 2 started. And just before you guys arrived at Croca, Edmund jumped ten years old. Or... Oh yeah, that's the growth spurt of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, so what had happened, and I and I'm gonna explain this a little bit because I don't know if we'll ever touch it again. Maybe, maybe not. But group two Myla was messing with her wild magic charges and was really uh letting it go wild. And she's an elf, so she's lived almost a hundred years or so. So when she rolled something that took 10 years from her and displaced it to somebody else, she didn't even notice the loss of years. Fast oh, forward. shit. It found its way over to group one into Edmund and completely implanted itself into him. And he gained 10 years. Bitch, I didn't even put those two together. I feel like a dumbass now. If I, if I remember correctly, too, the first time... Edmund and Asan met each other was before I was even in group one. He asked for directions to somewhere from a park bench. Yes. Uh, when my you, you met Edmund for the first time in Croca before they had even gotten there. He asked me, he asked us for directions somewhere. And Asan was like, oh, you go that way. That was a nice little cameo. It was. And of course, as a listener, it's like, I want to say something. But as a player, it's like, oh, I just some kid asking for directions, you know, just. As a listener, I completely just missed polite. that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, so, as a player, uh, I completely missed that. That's okay, because that was group two. He was in group two at that point. So you guys were in group one, and they had an entire episode. I don't think you guys at that point were even kind of split listening to the podcast at that point. We didn't want spoilers for you. So I think everybody was like, ow. Oh, I'll hear about it in game. I'll hear about it in game. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I listen. I listen to I listen to the podcast. I'm like, and 
Like sometimes I'd be like, oh, I want to know. And then I'm like, no, I want to listen. Because I, I talk to a lot of group two every day almost. <laughs> I still don't so, listen to the other groups episodes because I don't want I don't want that that knowledge. I want to I want it to, if it comes I want it to be from like a crossover or from a letter. I, I am really good because I edit and like every time I listen to an episode of this and I want to share it with you I'm like oh I hate this because like you you gotta hear their like lot latest episode it killed me I'm dead my heart hurts. It's, well, it's a and very the thing crucial is, plot episode, I would say, for group two. Well, and the thing is, is about, like, I'm really, really good about keeping that from character knowledge. Because I can separate myself from my characters really easily. So it's not a problem for me. I mean, I can rage about it, though. I mean, you guys, I hope and pray that is on the fucking episode. It just it, fucking Max reading my explosion of anger. That was so funny. Good. Oh, Good. Dude, I died. I, I was literally had, took a I break in the it. middle oh. of editing to do that just because I was bored of editing. I was like, you know what? You know what would be fun to do? More editing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my favorite thing ever. Like, I died. I was dead. When you started reading that, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> All right, off track. Go back. I'm sorry. So let's let's rewind a little bit again so I can keep us on track. Um we're in Croca. Uh you, Maggie, go down into the sewer. Unfortunately. You wanna tell us about about that bit of It was stinky there? and it was full of shit and goo. So you <laughs> met somebody there. No, the I know, I know. Time. I was I was messing around. Um I met Flora. Yep. And uh, yeah, I met Flora and I was she's had something she said she knew something about like not really new, but like they were doing research down there to see what the hell was going down there. Aggie was like, oh, my God. And um, so they tried to get out of there and she was like, I wonder what it is. And then she was like, get me out of here. I don't want to be down here anymore. I got to find my friends. I got to get upstairs like this is bad. And then she was like, why isn't the nobles doing anything about this? Like, do they not realize the danger of this, this thing? And she was like, yeah, they I mean, blah, blah, blah. And Maggie was pretty peeved. She was like, what the fuck? So they went back upstairs and she. Flora helped her find um, a place like a tavern so that she could hang out for a little bit. And then I don't remember who, f if I found somebody or somebody found me. I think you all kind of ran into each other on that one. Um, I think everybody kind of, cause Tinsel was in the church. He had to deal with that. Yep. And come out. He was freaking out cause he was getting a lot of attention and it just really was not Poor doing Tinsel. well with his anxiety. Poor Tinsel. <laughs> Poor Tinsel. Um, ended up being Charity's church. Um, and they returned and got more information on Charity. Um, what exactly did they have, or what did they want from charity? They wanted, yeah, they wanted charity to judge a competition, a fight. Oh, that's right. They were having fight for the uh, upcoming event for each and every guild. They had the huge guild event, which was yeah. in Croca at that point, which was growing a huge crowd. Um, and the church was asked to have one person to judge, and they thought of, well, at first they thought of Gunny, because it was kind of like a sign from God that the man randomly teleported into the middle of their their church. That a meteor could strike the earth, and they'd be like, God has spoken, and it's like, shut up. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, that's my church you're there. talking about. I didn't say <laughs> Alphrodite, I said God. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's every religion too. You know, you you see those signs and you interpret in them in your own way. And Hi. hello, GG. Hello. Sorry if you guys hear something in the mic. It's my cat. Hello. So, um, we kind of came back together. We tried to gather a bit more of information. We were and ended up having doing something, and then all of a sudden we heard screaming and crying outside. <laughs> Uh, as even before that, we yeah, um, we had to say goodbye to Jericho. Didn't like they leave fight? Jericho and Croca? Yeah, we did because we wanted to give. Was that after we the went... fight? Oh, it was after the fight. 
No, we left Jericho before but... we got to Croker because we couldn't take him through the portal. That's true. Yeah, so we I'm gave nice... him to a farmer on a nice farm so that he'd have a li- he'd live a very good life. So, so there you go, Gunny. It, it's official. We've we've marked the area, at Nottingham. That's where you got to go to get Jericho back. <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> um. So yeah, all hell broke loose. Well, I'm dead. Um. Everybody's screaming. Everybody's panicking. You guys are in an inn at that point. You had just spoken with Flora about more information. Um, trying to figure out what to do, what the next turn was. She said that she had informed uh, the guards about that information, uh, everything that they had experienced, and then just kaboom. Uh, you guys run out to the streets. You see people going crazy, going nuts, so screaming and running. Uh, as you can see, the the ground basically rip apart, all the stone come out. And <laughs> Maggie's worst disgusting fear, a large slime creature arrives. <laughs> um, actually, I think she was ready. She was on a rooftop, wasn't she? Yeah, I got on top of the roof. I must climb! And then she dived like... into it, too. Yeah, I dived into it because I was hoping that I could find a heart or something like that. Or I was also hoping that I could just, because it was absorbing so much magic, I was like, I was hoping that if I could overload it with magic, it would just explode. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that was my thought process. She wasn't trying to die. Like, everybody was like, oh, you're trying to kill Maggie. I was like, no, I'm just doing what she would do. But she's trying to kill herself. She not isn't in- trying to kill herself. Not intentionally, but she is. <laughs> And I think this was the first time that Group 1, in in the heat of combat, mixed with Group 2. Yep. Um, Let's see. That fight was pretty whack because you guys had a dragon. You guys had a god. Big (laughs) Aethon. You guys had the High King. I slayed the the DM. (laughs) (laughs) She was a god for like... What, all the like three rounds, right? Three, four rounds? All uh, hail God Myla. And then she ended up summoning um, a rare item, which was the fireball necklace, right? And tossed that at the goop. Thank God and I didn't up. explode. <laughs> yeah. And then Rodeo jumped in. Or not Rodeo. Aeson jumped in and got Maggie. And then Kenny Group 1 and Group 2 mingled for a night. Is- well, oh, and Maggie what? got really mad at the High King, and she also was feeling useless like she had been for a while. Yeah. Oh, and there was also that thing between Charity and Maggie about the horn. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. uh, during travel getting to Kloka, there was a time where you guys ran into a couple of bodies. And <laughs> Kimbram. It's so hard to keep it in one one thing because we've lived. Well, because I was just well, I was just I was just thinking about that. I was like, oh wait, I was like that was because I was like Maggie at that point was already feeling kind of useless because she kind of felt like she wasn't doing anything for the party, and then like what? Then there was that pinnacle moment where she uh she made that she was about to one hundred percent leave the group. Charity and Maggie's relationship, <laughs> literally in a nutshell. Right, <laughs> like it was really weird for Charity because she's usually this really like calm temperament. Like everything just rolls off her back; it's all good, doesn't matter. And then this this particular thing really upset her. <laughs> she's like, ah, shush, shush, shush. And then like. Maggie 100% was about to split from the group because she was like, listen, I have to get to Croca because this is before we, whenever we were like hightailing it to Croca and I was like, I have to get to Croca. I have to get to Aeson. I have to get to, you know, to the rest of the group. I have to protect my people I love. And I understand if you want to go on this mission of your own, but I must go. And so she left. And that's when the rest of the group followed her because winter isn't. Let her go by herself. Well, and Winters and Tensils was, was were following Maggie. It was Charity, mm, Nia, and this is no, not Nia. Yeah, no, this was when Nia was still around. Um, before we disappeared, 
And uh, Winters and Tensil were following after Maggie. And Nia and Charity and Edmund were staying behind with her and Pembrum. Yep. And then that's... Bodies and doing last rites. And then that was when uh, Charity gave her horn to Pembrum to deal with it. And she followed after Maggie. And then Maggie felt guilty for that for like forever. Still does feel guilty about it. Won't ever let herself live that down. Um, yeah, I think thankfully Pimbrum kind of lived through that, but it might have also give a bad air for the uh, McCullen family, for the Pimbrum family. He'll think badly of her regardless. She's more worried about her. Um, she has more things to worry about. Um, it came full circle in the end because I believe Pembroke met up with Asa and gave him the horn and said, "Take this to the Tiefling charity." And yeah, well, and, and the, the thing is, is that battle. well, and the thing is, is that um, Maggie would one hundred percent say this to Pembroke. She would be like, "I had the choice between you know helping a friend and looking after my people, and I chose my people." That's fair. I think Pimber will be busy for a little while chasing after the High King, though. Hope he trips on a sword. Anyways, um, oh, he's a nice guy. Hey, I don't like Pimber. I don't like Pimber. I don't like him there. Me? I don't like because he's. A, I just he just has his air of like, I deserve. I deserve. It's like you don't deserve shit. He's well. He's not fighting for himself. He's fighting that because. There's been no high king, and nobody's taken charge in God knows how long. Mm-hmm. He sees I don't know. He the just, realm he just, chaos. Yeah. He was going yeah, to I just, duel Aeson for the right to be high king. Like, I mean, that's well, fine, too. Maggie can well, just have well, a really bad first impression with the guy. I mean, those happen all the time. I was about to say, yeah, like, Maggie is 100% doesn't like Pimbrum. But... Yeah. That She's... was actually a great moment with Maggie too when she found out that Aeson was going to duel Pembrum. And she, she about was... almost backhanded him. She was like, you what? And you agreed to this? Like, yeah, she what? basically did the thing where like, you know, whenever like she's trying to remain calm and civil and she like says it through her teeth like, you did what? <laughs> there's, there's still one prophecy left to have come from that crystal. Yes, mm-hmm. there is. I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah, and neither is Maggie. I believe it was uh, Aeson standing over some other body with a crown on its head and a sword looking really Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then I 100... got something different along those lines as well. And the thing is, is that like Maggie, when she saw that, she that's why she rushed. Did we ever <sighs> check the crystal again? Did we ever go back? No. And... Okay. We should before we get to Eris, you know? Isn't there one more side we don't know? I mean, that's only if your characters would think about that. I mean, I mean that's just me asking the question for curiosity's sake. Well, and the thing is, is that Maggie is has a lot on her mind, considering that her mother is very sick, who that is like, her parents are her life, like, and so are her people, and she's very worried about her people. She's very worried about this unneeded war right now. And she's like, I, she's starting to feel that her place is in the courts right now, not outside running with Aeson and Charity and saving the world in that aspect. She is thinking that she needs, they need a home to come home to. And if they let it run to shambles. Which is a little bit different from the, I want to see the world aspect that she started with. Well, yeah, because she's matured a lot. She's like, my place is with the courts. I have to, like, now I see, like, not that I'm not powerful enough to handle my own. It's just I need, I know where my strengths are, and that's with the courts, and I need to go back before something horrible happens. And Aeson and and Charity deserve a home to come home to, and Maggie will fight tooth and nail for that. Corey's done a really good job as a DM of doing that, where he makes the characters have to deal with the things that they do. Cause for me and my character, Aeson's whole backstory was he didn't want to be in the courts. He didn't want to do political things. He wanted to go out and help the people. 
And a lot of Asan's storyline so far in both groups has been him having to do more political dealings and deal with charisma versus brawn. And it's, 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 it's having him grow. And there's some bad things that are probably going to come from this for him. He's probably going to stop seeing things with rose tinted glasses that he has in the past. And, and that brother's become uh, a real prick. Well, his brother was always a real prick. <laughs> It was a surprise to me because he didn't really come off that way the first time because I didn't really know exactly how you wanted your brother. And, and I remember the first him. episode that we we wanted him to flirt with Maggie, but I was just I was like, I'm not ready for that yet. We got to build to that. We got to. Oh yeah, no, no. And the thing is, is that Maggie will go toe to toe with that guy. She'll slit his throat with her words. I don't like think she realized that he doesn't really deal with her much now. Yeah, because he's afraid of her. And that's good. And that's why Maggie wants to go to court for it. Just go to the courts for it. Because it and that's the one of the reasons why I love Maggie and Asan so much is because they complement each other very well. Where Maggie is weak, Asan is strong, and where Asan is weak, the Maggie real is strong. The important part and the hard part you guys are gonna have is getting court between Graydon and Aris. Yeah, and that's what Maggie's the most concerned about right now. She well, one and she one hundred. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've been talking a lot. I'm I was going to say, if Asan hears that Maggie wants to stay at the courts, he's going to have to tell her what his brother said because he's the only one who really knows the things his brother said. I think he told Willem a little bit about it, which I really like the I really like the budding friendship between Willem and Asan that started happening. That's so cute. And I also have really, really enjoyed like the budding relationship of whatever it is between Edmund and Asan because very cold at first, but he start. they seem to like have this mutual respect for each other to the point where they don't even like, they don't get upset. He doesn't, Edmund doesn't get upset about little things like he used to with Asan. Like for example, when the ghost came and tried to steal the, the necklace, Asan was just sitting out there with Edmund, like got any plans. What can we do? If I jump and grab him, can you get him? You know? And they're, they're like trying to, Try to scheme together, but yeah. when the Matt... real the real test of that will be in calm moments. If he's still like that in calm moments, well, yeah. Well, one of the things is too, Asan. I, I've been I've been doing a lot of map reading and figuring out timelines and doing all this stuff. The things Asan wants to do and the things that I feel like need to be done and stuff. But the next thing on Asan's list, regardless, because he made the promise, is to make sure Edmund gets to Hazel because that was. That was what he he promised yeah. him, that you're gonna go to Hazel after. Yeah, it's still kind of a big mystery what's in Hazel for him. I don't think he's really covered it. Nope, but Asan's gonna make sure he gets there because he asked to, and Asan said, after we go there, I promise we'll Yeah. I'm worried and... it's gonna turn into an Anders moment. Oh, an Anders moment, Jesus. What's an oh. Anders moment? Anders so Dragon in Dragon H2. Age 2, Anders um, recruits, well, manipulates Hawk to plant bombs in the church. Yeah, it's bad. Hmm. It's it's a time. But I'm really, really, like, what my, my favorite all-time relationship in this entire game is Charity and Maggie's. I will always love that charity. I will always love their relationship. Always. <laughs> You know what? I, I I think I'll say this because I don't think anything's ever been questioned or asked about it. You know, nobody's asked Edmund about his home life before he left Graydon. Uh, Maggie would want to, but she feels like it's a touchy subject. Aton doesn't feel like he's earned that yet. Maggie Does won't Maggie feel like huh? she's maybe earned that information or even charity. I think but, Maggie would want to know, but she doesn't want Edmund to feel that she wants him to, like, she never wants to force it out of him. She's like, he will come to me when he is ready to talk. That's just the way Maggie is. Same, of like, I will let him open up. Like, she might eventually try to prod the information. Yeah. When we get closer to Hazel, she might go, hey, mm -hmm. just, just so I know what we're getting into. Like, you don't have to say anything. But yeah, right now, she's kind of like, I don't want to push him hey. for anything. I don't want him to feel like we need to know everything. 
that's actually one of my favorite things about Maggie's character is that she she really gets boundaries. Maggie understands boundaries because she also understands the courts and boundaries are a big deal. But it's also because she also likes people to give her space. So and she was taught the golden rule and that's what she learned. <laughs> so <laughs> That makes any sense. Hello? It ma it makes perfect sense. Oh okay, I was just making sure my mic didn't cut out or something. But um I got some coughs coming up. Oh, you're good. No, I'm just making sure that my mic didn't go out. It's all good. But like I really love Maggie and Charity's relationship and I'll cherish it for the my entire life. Because yeah, that's a, good, it's a really good one. <laughs> no, I like, do want to take a minute real quick. Sorry. Uh, just specifically for Jasper. Because, oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's perfectly okay because specifically Jasper's been a real Edmund fan for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I really um, am. I love Edmund so much. <laughs> Do you want to recap some stuff we may have forgotten for Edmund? Um, so one of one of my I, um one of my favorite moments was when uh he was in the forest and he saw people like ghosts and shit and he got possessed. I I I love oh, that. Oh yeah, that Loki turned into a supernatural magnet. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, he spoke um, to a dead girl, uh, had a god in him, <laughs> changed 10 years of age. Um, like, he is just the punching wizard. bag for magnet for magic. I feel oh, bad man. for him. And yet, I mean, like, he still, like, takes it in stride. I think, and I think that's also the worst part about Edmund and, and just kind of looking at him as a character. You know, all that stuff is pretty bad. But he only really lets it bother him for so long. But he's it, always angry. But why is yeah. he? It's, it's like Steven Universe. He has, has a anyone... lot. He... <laughs> Sorry. He has a... It's okay. He has a lot of things he's had to process at such a small amount of time. And that's why Maggie and Charity are trying so hard to teach him how to cope with those, those emotions. Because that, they don't even, like I, for Maggie at least, I can't say speak for Charity. But Maggie can't even she she's so she feels so bad for him she's like he has to have lived an entire lifetime in a matter of moments he's never gonna get those moments that every person gets you know what i mean so yeah, she's like to... go ahead sorry i cut you off again i'm really no. sorry <laughs> no please go ahead not to mention like the psych potential psychological damage that would be happening to him because like he's been uh picked up from a town abandoned lied to he's been um a loki abused by sebastian with the whole like oh i'm going to cure you but no i need to show off for a second uh, he's been battered and bruised by every form of magic in the game like i feel so bad for him except for bardic magic bardic mag magic has done nothing but cure him Maggie refuses to let him see that magic in a bad light. And thankfully, druid magic too, thanks to Nia. Yeah, because Maggie wants the best for Edmund, and she I really one hundred. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, no. Um, I mean, like you said, you want the best for Edmund, and I think there is one thing that has been the most worrisome, and it's not even that he's picked up a hatred for anybody who's a spellcaster like Sebastian had. He's picked up a hatred for men. And that's yep. fair. I completely they, understand. Yeah, that's a fucking mood. Um, but yeah, that's... And she's trying... That's why she's, like, trying not to get... Like, she's trying not to have her bias of Aeson to uh, have him sure her be like, oh, no, he's okay, don't worry. She's like, no, he has to make that decision on his own. I can't force that decision on him because then he'll think that I'm, you know, sh he'll think that I'm just being biased. You know what I mean? I think Gason's done a pretty good job of it on his own. I think there was one moment that got really glossed over. And it was a crucial moment for Edmund, a very important, crucial moment for Edmund. Because when walking back after the fight in Kroka, he was walking with Everett. Or no, who was he walking with? He was walking with Cole um, from Group 1, and, and now he's traveling with Group 2. Um, 
they were actually walking back. He was soaking wet. I remember that because Maggie was like, why is he soaking wet? But he was actually having a conversation and laughing with Cole. That was a really cute moment, actually. I, <laughs> I fondly well, remember. Well, Cole's a really good man, so. Yeah. I think little moments like that are helpful for him. Uh, I can't mm-hmm. wait to see where he kind of goes as far as growing because I'm just going to stay true to the character as far as that. Just like you guys with any other character or NPC, I can't wait to see how he goes because anything could alter him. Um, but let's let's move on. I want to get somebody speaking here because he hasn't been speaking a lot lately because this is about when he's coming in. Um, Asan, would you like to recap the, the tail end here of where we're currently at, and uh, then we can go over maybe what we expect or what we hope in the future. So, when I came into group one, it was uh, a a changing of the guard. It was uh, Tensel switched over to group two because he had been looking for Myla for answers about his father. And Asan had been looking, uh, especially since he heard Maggie was out running about and doing dangerous things, typical Maggie fashion. Um, he was looking for Maggie, and so it made sense for them to to switch into the other one's groups. Um, <clears throat> one of the first things we found out was that Maggie's parents were sick with the... Parent, mother, parent, just my mother. Mother was, mother was sick with the... Um, I always forget the name of the flower. I mean, we can Priscilla's. make them both. Sick. No! <laughs> the Priscilla's flower sickness. And... We were scouting what we needed for a cure, and we had found something. Tensil had part of it, and we had taken that from him. And we went to uh, the one of it was the blood of a or the blood or a heart of a dragon, I believe, yeah. something like that. And yep, uh, we went and we went and found some leads on dragons, and we went searching. And during our search, we had found a little um little home uh, a key willem had found uh, turned out to be a home could that's... i huh could i maybe pause you real quick to cover yeah. one thing yeah so i just noticed here we did mention about tensils moving over but um i think we didn't really cover what happened to winter winters he pair if i recall correctly he unfortunately yeah, passed think... away when when the casualties started pouring in, we looked over the the unfortunately the, the bodies. Um, he was unfortunately somebody who got caught under some really tough rubble, um, which took his life. So I think unfortunately, chalk that up. I think that's the third member now that Group One's lost. Yep. I'm sorry. You may continue now. So we found this home, and we were all very suspicious of it, and. We searched through it, and as we searched through it, it became rejuvenated. And we found out that it was like a home that, when it was needed, it became what it was needed for. And it turned out that we had a robot butler in there, too. Or a Mm. skeleton butler. Skeleton butler. I was about to say, we didn't have a robot, but yeah. Okay. Nama arigato, Mr. Robot. Oh, here's a funny (laughs) tidbit for your listeners. Um, Anytime... (laughs) Technical issues. We love saying that. <laughs> it's true. It's and true. Freaking out. We all. Mr. <laughs> Roboto. And I'm sorry. Next time. Next time it happens, I will leave it just once. But usually I cut that out. Um. Sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. No. And then we. F- oh. And at some point, I, I don't remember in what order it was, but we found a library in the basement, and also we found uh, Everett again on the road. And I'm also forgetting the troll. The troll when oh, we yeah. found our newest member who had been running. Oh, yeah. The troll that was following Willem and eventually tried to kidnap and adopt Maggie. No, future wife. Based on, based on Captain America, it while other people jumped on it and beat it to death. And Maggie mocked it. The troll and Charlie was there. Bang, bang, bang. Not only did Maggie mock it, 
she bit it. Yeah, she did. Which was also something that uh, was very crucial later when she started turning colors. Uh, I tried to forget. <laughs> yeah, because you had like what troll rot for like two days, where your skin was discolored and rough, and and Maggie was having he was crying the entire time. And Edmund tricked her to drinking a potion by putting it in a nice bottle. <laughs> yeah. There's been a lot going on. We've we've gotten a lot we've gotten through a lot with group one. We ended up finding out through research in the basement that our parents were all part of some group, and I believe something some bad stuff about my uncle being a real bastard man. Um, I don't believe it was too, like, there weren't too many stories on it, but a very bad bastard man. Just like brother. Um, oh, it seems to run in the family. Hey. Hey! Missy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Watch yourself now. <laughs> hey, Let's I mean, still blood. Listen, the thing is, as long as the other, the arc, like, we don't have kids that have, like, Aeson and Maggie have the kids that don't do that, she's fine. Let's not live on the goal. What if it skips a generation? That is That'd true. That'd be nice. It, or what if it's still within the DNA? Maggie it's in the just wants to, Mag, Maggie's just well, going to well, slip well, off into the abyss and never be so unseen for again. I don't know if it was determined if it was his father's brother or if it was his mother's brother because Aeson has a different mom from his brother yeah that's fair um I think it was uh wait wait what 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 are we trying to pin on his his father oh I'm not on his uncle father. the uncle remember that we we learned in the in the cellar that there was bad the, the uncle was bad Aeson's uncle oh yes um yeah, I don't think you had a lot of information on your uncle. In fact, your father didn't really speak of him all too much. So we, I was just wondering if it was his father's brother or his 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 father's first wife's brother. Because yeah, we just... don't know that we don't have that information yet. Because that, yeah. that that was just the whole the whole speculation on whether or not the being a dickhead runs in the genes or if it if it's safe with his brother because it was his mom's. His mom's DNA. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe it was his mother the whole time. Dun, dun, dun. Who knows? I don't know. But I know you guys eventually made it through most of the forest. Uh, and there's been two more occurrences since then. A ghostly one and a foxly one. Yep. A ghost came down and tried to take our amulet. When we were all riding together, I think at that point it was Maggie, Aeson, and Edmund were out riding and doing the caravan while uh, Charity and Edmund, or not Edmund's Charity and Everett were and Willem were inside. Didn't he also take the key? Willem was off on a different adventure. Oh yeah, he didn't take yeah. the amulet. He took the key. Yeah, he took the key and ran, which was even worse because you had people on the inside. Yeah, and we needed. Yeah, that was a that was a scary moment. But then he kind of agreed to help us out, be our main Switch side. side. We'll see if it pays off. Uh, at least he didn't kill you guys. If he could have, <laughs> you know, God knows how that's. We've had people try to kill the group for so far. So, so far, no luck. I mean, it just depends on. Nobody so far has killed this part of the group. I mean, I know group two. Current uh, body uh, count of the group four. is three. A monk who kicked the sticky mimic, <laughs> if I recall correctly. Well, I mean, the body count isn't three. I mean, we've lost three members. Uh, I think two. Palace, lost- I think we we wrote off. She left. Um, uh, Nina as in of the as so in of the lost. podcast. Like group one has one death, like recorded, and that's um Winters. Okay. Group two has yeah. um the monk and uh the <laughs> pot person, the person who cooked a lot and had pink hair. <laughs> yeah. And also yeah. 
That was a time. Yeah, that was a time as well. That was a weird time. Yeah, I mean, all those... So the thing is, too, that I, I've really liked about the podcast so far is that you can go back and listen, and as when Winter and Tensils... And our ten, winters and tensile. My bad. I screwed it up there with the, with the, with everything. But uh, with winter and tense, winters and tensile, and then myself and Sam came in. It's the podcast has felt pretty stable since then. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, we had always wanted to add Jasper, but he was always busy. And then finally, we got to, and I, I was ecstatic. Because Jasper is amazing. Yeah, because there was first... a small moment where I had to leave again, and then I came back. Ah, that's okay. I mean, the cool part is, is we still got a little bit of season two to worry about. I think we're gonna look at uh, kind of an idea. I think me and Winter had, but we'll talk more on that later. Um. So we got this ghost on our side. And then we moved a little bit farther in, and you got into Father Fox. That was on Everett's suggestion. Everett suggested to us that Father Fox might be able to help us find a, a cure for the Priscilla's uh, disease. And yeah. our other lead right there was to find the blood of a of a hundred or a thousand year old human and a dragon's heart. Yeah. And it's it was either it was either find those very very hard things that might have us searching all over the continent, or take a gamble on going to Father Fox. And you know both are pretty equally dangerous. Father Fox, you know he's he's not always known for being the kindest. Uh, neither of us go find Father Fox because he was the only humanoid we could think of that had lived there for a thousand years. And it's. It's uh, it had been dangerous to pick down that dragon, and that dragon it had to be an evil dragon, if I remember, or that was just an Aeson stipulation, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that was an Aeson stipulation. Yeah, I think the, at that the, point you had already met a dragon, made deal with a dragon, been a friend with a dragon. dragon. He was. Yeah, he, I consider him a friend. He delivered a letter to my father, and he Did you also know Flora at this point too. So that's yeah. another point. Dragon points. Yeah, dragon Flora, Flora and Aeson were they, they were all right. They were friends, but uh, um, oh, before she died, yeah. Um, but Aeson likes dragons now. Al yeah. Alternate Aeson, original Aeson, who's not part of this campaign, yeah, hated dragons, absolutely despised them. But I think there is a big surprise for Group yeah. One too, because as far as yeah. Group One knows, Flora's still dead. <laughs> Yep. I was about yep. to ask that oh, actually. Wait. Did I? I was about. Oh. I was about to say. I was about to say. Group one, one hundred percent. I know because I've you know been listening to the episodes, but like Maggie does not know. <laughs> Did Ace one not get a letter from from Lynn saying that Flora was alive? See, not yet. No, I and think. Here's no, the I worst think, part. I think that's the first. Even letter. the letters that you've sent since after a certain point, you've not been getting anything going on with the crystal. I have a sending crystal for them to contact me. Yes, you do. But I I think I already got the message that Flora was alive. They told me about Zachariah, Flora was alive. They told me to look after Maggie, and then they told me the ingredients I needed. Yep. So I know I know Flora's alive. I think I shared that with the rest of the group. No, you didn't. Oh, maybe not. Asan. You have a lot on your oh, mind no. right now. Asan has no, a lot you, on his mind right now. I'm not sure. I'll go back and say, but I think you might have actually shared it with them. Hey, so well, I know, I know for sure he shared the ingredients to the cure. Um, my my real surprise is is like there was no real second thought on the fact that somebody just came back from the dead. Group one was just like, Good well, it's not like. It's, it, they're not in person, so you can't go. Excuse me, what did you say? It's it's like we got to process the other things, and at that point, they had a lot going yeah. on. Like they're like, we need to get this. We need to go kill a dragon, and yeah, that's gonna be hard. Or we need to convince it to give us its heart, or something. We need to figure something out. Mm -hmm. I believe actually, didn't the didn't the dragon 
No, Pembram. Pembram told me where to go. That was right. Pembram, Pembram had told Aeson where to go, and he had given him his paladin book to study on, which Aeson has been studying on every night before he goes to bed. So that... um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Um and then the final thing we left off with the group is that you guys had finally made it through the forest safely. And you were staring over the sandy wasteland at the large army accumulating in front of Eris. And Maggie wants to die. <laughs> Asa Kidding. is uh, very terrified about that because yeah. when Father Fox told them that Eris and Graydon were at war, and he knows he's heading into Eris right now with Maggie to help her save her parents, um, mm. he's probably not the person they want to see there. He's probably yeah. not friendship numero uno in the city of Eris right now. He's probably enemy number. He's probably public enemy yeah, number one right there. And Maggie You're, gave yeah, it, not Maggie didn't revoked. call off. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say your VIP card has been revoked. <laughs> yeah, um, Maggie. And then during that time, Maggie not saying that she was like not calling off the engagement or anything like that. For the safety of both of them, she gave him back his signet ring so that no one knew there was a connection. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, they still might, which is something. Oh, your, father, your parents might be suspicious. No, I, I think no. I don't think it's an openly. We told them. Well, I don't think your people know, though. No, or, we know. have not told the people yet. Well, his brother knows. So who knows who knows now? Yeah, the courts yeah, might know. Sure. Yeah, maybe his, his brother's set up a smear and campaign. Well, you know, you could arrive at Eris and you they he could have sent a letter saying that Rodeo has escounded with their daughter. <laughs> Rodeo? You mean Ace? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Ace on has escounded. Sorry, man. Ace on has abs Rodeo has absconded with Red. And the people of Eris will be like, what the fuck did they just write me a letter about? <laughs> Who's Rodeo and Red? <laughs> But uh, I mean, there's there's that potential that Aeson may have. I don't know. I mean, if she, you know, definitely you guys are going back so you can clear up anything that might be whispered about in time. But you know, maybe there's some worry there from both sides of the family. Oh, well, probably is, and Aeson Aeson wants nothing more than to say hi to Maggie's parents and to let them know that everything is going to be okay. They have a really good relationship. Like the McKellens love Aeson. Or even your dad. Yeah. My dad. My dad. Oh, no, Rodeo. Uh, Red, Aeson's dad. Oh, oh okay. I was like, because Aeson's dad likes Maggie a lot, and so does. His I was mom. about to say. I was about to say Maggie's. Like, contacting him right now is impossible thanks to your brother. Yeah, fucking uh, bastard. Which I can't. I I tried, and the brother won't send through the messages. So. And that's a. And once he brings that to Maggie's attention, Maggie, that will solidify her being like, "No, I'm staying in the courts." This is fishy. I can't do this. You guys go save the world. I'll make sure there's a home for you guys to get home to. It's going to be hard for Aeson if that's what ha ends up happening because he he uh, he relies on Maggie a lot for strength, but as <laughs> been traveling with this party, there has been the... There's been definitely burgeoning friendships with Willem and Charity and Edmund. Well, and that was what Maggie was thinking. Maggie was like, I would never have left you in better... I could not leave you in better hands. And especially... especially I, I love I love the, the catty but respectful relationship that Aeson and Charity have with each other. Like, he'll go wake her up because he just doesn't know what to do always with, with the rest of the group. And she's like, you're waking me up for this? Are you serious, Aeson? I will... I will slap you in the teeth for waking me up in the middle of the it's night. It's a lot of fun because she has this emotion of, look, dude, I like you, but you always run around and act like the big shot. But when you need to act like dad kind of big shot, you fail <laughs> me. Let me sleep and do your job. I th I th oh, that is hilarious. I think the fucking called. He tries. He tries to be the big shot dad, but nobody will end up. He knows they'll listen to charity, but he he knows they won't listen to him. So <laughs> when people are doing learn things, air that he needs to carry that weight because it's not that she 
knows how to talk them down because she does the same thing that Aeson does. She talks to them the same way. It's just she carries herself differently. So, like, everyone looks at Aeson and they're like, oh, it's fine. It doesn't matter. And then they're like, try to, like, oh, <laughs> I gotta listen yeah. to mom. And so Aeson... Well, was- and... I was going to say, Aeson wants to go back to Graydon and fix things with his brother. And There's no know, fixing that. Well, by fix, I mean, he means beat him up and tell him if you ever hold back my messages from dad again. I swear to God. Ma- Maggie it, may or may not have a really bad plan, but it's a Maggie plan. And, I don't like the idea of that. But Aeson doesn't have the time, because if I... so if I, Maggie... If we'll re- have the time. If I recall correctly, we have to go to the forest outside Dalesville. The uh, I forget what it's called. I don't have my map pulled up. That's where one of the, the artifacts you have to find is. Yeah, no, uh, the, the Brinkle Woods, just north of Dalesville. Yeah, the Brinkle Woods. We have to go there. But Asan promised he promised Edmund that he is going to take him to Hazel first. And in- so what's what's the main plan? Are we heading to Eris, potentially dropping off Maggie and then heading north? Well, I mean that's that sounds like it's the character's plan. Asad absolutely is going to be devastated if Maggie decides not to come with. Well the thing is, is if this war isn't kind of settled soon, Graydon might start amassing a a war. Uh and that's what Maggie's worried about. Would Asan get be- drafted? Maybe, That's what Maggie's worried about. People like, from Winderland and Groggy Hill could be displaced Aeson, from their town. Aeson. The whole Alba Forest could be destroyed. Um, it's it's a war between the sand and the grass. Plus and, side for Willem, he can't be drafted. Where is next? Charlie is going to hightail it to Hazel with Edmund. Be like, that's, that's... take a detour. It's okay. I've been pushing this poor kid's dream off for way too long. It's getting ridiculous. It's just. One I mean, yeah, that's a, that's absolutely what Aeson's point of view was. Was that he felt bad enough because he didn't know that you guys have been promising to take him to Hazel forever until after we said, "Hey, we're going to Eris to help, or we're going to go find the cure and then go to Eris to help Maggie's parents." He's like, "What about Hazel?" and Asad is like, I promise you we'll get you to Hazel after we do the Aeris thing. It's just this is time is time is important for here. And that was a big deal for Maggie for Edmund to understand that. Like Maggie would never have done this if it wasn't for her mother being sick. So Asan plans that sounds like it's our next plan after Aeris is to be to go to Hazel for Edmund. I think I think we can all agree on that. Maggie's um, going to stay until she fixes the courts. So, what, because we're, we're getting close to having maybe 15, 20 minutes left. What would you guys like to see? I mean, other than, of course, going to Hazel. What else would you guys like to see? Are there any ties, any story things that seem to be undended? Do you want to get the answer to, or is there... Something generally you'd like to see from the story or the characters or well one thing know. one thing um I would like to see is um I'm thinking that there's a possibility if oh it wouldn't be for a while anyway. I was gonna say Asan wants to try to get the group to come back to to Graydon to see if there's anything that he can sort out there. But first, he has to stop. They all have to stop at the the Brickle Woods, do all that. And he also wants to meet up with um, Pemberm again because he's been studying that Paladin book in and out, and he wants to be able to to take that oath. Hmm. And, I know this is like way at the end game, but I would love to see Aeson and Maggie's wedding with everybody in the group there, and Charity uh, being the one that marries them, that officiates it. It's one of my biggest. I want to see. I would also love to see the crossover. What was that? Um, winters, winter. Jesus, I'm tired. I'm sorry. I would be so happy to do that. Maggie would refuse to have anyone else. To be honest with you, Asan would as well. <laughs> Especially- I don't care. 
how long it takes. I'm waiting until she's available. Pretty much. Especially with, with it sounds like Maggie is going to end up leaving and staying in staying in Eris, trying to work her magic <laughs> to fix things. I have I have a feeling that uh, Aeson and Charity are going to become okay. closer friends because. It just it just seems like it is. Well, you know, he Edmund still has the distrust of men. There might be something that comes between them with him fulfilling his promise to take him to Hazel and all that. And who knows what happens at Hazel? And Willem and Asan, they're 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 gonna be they're gonna be a dynamic duo. I like. I I, like I want a scene where Asan teaches Willem to fight. I yes, Corey. That's okay. There you go. We there's one I, thing that we both want. Well, I can't promise anything because. Well, well Willem, yes. Uh, sorry, not Edmund. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely a possibility for that. Always. You know what? And and the thing is, so I believe since Asad and Willem have been the ones doing the daytime travel, they mm-hmm. could. And we just finished our daytime travel at the end of last episode, I believe. Um, yeah, we can, we can once we get back in, if you guys want to start doing ow, training ow. roles and such, we can go over that and get that dynamic in. We could do training roles in a, and it could just be a, it would just be a fun scene to have Asan trying to teach uh, Willem how to fight. And Asan, he'll, he'll be a, a good, whatever he's going to be, big brother figure. I think that'd be. Amazing. I'm really excited. <laughs> go ahead, no, please, please oh. go ahead. Okay, and and right now is probably a good time for it because um, Willem is realizing how weak he is <laughs> because he got beat up by a troll and now he has a vicious sunburn. Asa mm-hmm. looks at all of you guys too and thinks he's the weak one because you guys all cast your magic and do such cool things and he's like, I I hit with stick. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you don't hit with a stick anymore. You hit with an enchanted flower. Yeah, I, I I make Rose go stab. Oof. You know what I'm really excited about though is you guys seeing Maggie in the courts. Does that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. you guys have seen her really out of her element. This is her element. You know what I mean? I'm like, Asan has. Oh yeah, Asan. Asan. He loves that about her because he he knows that he can't do that. He's like, he he would just be like, can we all just shut the fuck up and get along? Like he, Asad would get, he's always very polite, but he would get very, very tired of the rigmarole and the and the veiled and, assaults and everything that goes on in the courts. And he'd just and, be like, "We all yeah. calm the fuck down and figure this out." And Maggie just like puts her hand on his on his on his hand and it's like, "Shh." I want well, to go in a small, a small crucial thing that I think I should drop for you guys because it's come out for group two already, so it's already out there. Um, the attempted killing in Eris mm-hmm. actually succeeded. Um, it'll be interesting because for us, uh, out outside of game, just just for us as as a group, um, Maggie's father's the ones running uh, Eris right now. Wait, Maggie's mother is dead. What? No, 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 no. no. What? Maggie's mother's still sick. Oh my god, you fucking say that to me. So, so the king of Eris, the guy who brought Maggie's parents from Dalesville to Eris, he was oh, murdered. Son of a bitch. And now Maggie's father is um, interned to the king, so he's taking charge as the king of Eris for the oh time. My god. Oh so my wait, god. So wait, is he the war then? Huh? Is he the one who started the war then? They both That's... prepped for war immediately. Uh, Dig well, but... the king died. Logan doesn't want war, though. That's not in his character. Think, I don't think either of them truly want war, but the problem, the fact of the matter is, is that a oh, dignitary strength. has been killed, and the people of Eris are absolutely furious with Creighton. Whether the capital wants it or not, it's what the people want. And the people are the it's ones who have war or guillotine. Yeah, pretty much. It's either war or produce the one who did it. And that's what and that's what Mag- then do. that's what and that's what Maggie's trying to do. Well, you see, I, I, I have a feeling that it's the big bad guy is trying to start wars between the nations oh, yeah. to stop us 
to stop basically to stop us from being able to find the things. Here's my question for Maggie. Actually, here's, mm. a, here's a question for the character of Maggie. Mm. Because your parents were adventurers before they became nobles and they adventured with Aeson's father and all of that and Charity's oh, parents. Right. What if they tell her that they want her out there? Um, she would try to persuade them that she's this is where she needs to be. And no, I have not. Um, no, I don't. I don't listen to the. Like I said, I don't listen because I like to. I like to find. I out still in need game. to catch up. Um, but Maggie would. She would try to persuade her parents that she needs to be out. She needs to be in the courts, not out and about. She would say the same thing that I've been saying that Maggie would want to have a home for not only Aeson but for Charity, for Edmund, for them, because it's not fair that. She doesn't think it's wise or fair that the world is literally crumbling around us and we're fighting about bullshit like this. Like, this is not the time. We need to be unified, not separated. No more fighting amongst ourselves. We are all brethren. Exactly. And that's what Maggie Maggie's trying. Helen becomes Inquisitor. <laughs> Fuck yeah, she does. Um, no, she's like a Josephine. Um... Oh, hell yes. Maggie's a Josephine. Um, yeah, the end of last season, or the end of last episode for group two, I will drop the bombshell. The big bad guy has been in, uh, introduced. Oh, nice. Sinful's father. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, the poor baby Tinsel. I know. I guess you he won't be wanting that that medallion back then. But there's there's way way more to it. So even dropping that doesn't even give full details. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. So, I still need to catch up. Well, I mean, it got spoiled for us because Milo posted it in the wrong fucking chat, and I, I was hanging out. With, I, was, I was hanging out with this. Not the end of it, like. Even if I knew that before I went in editing, and I was crying while I was editing, so that's like see... not even all of it. I had it... invited this girl that I was seeing over for dinner, and we were sitting at the dinner table, and my phone went on alert, and it said, "Well, Mila's dead." And out loud, I went, "What? <laughs> Excuse me?" And she's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> not okay." Oh like, my god. Fictional character. Wait, did Mila die? Your relationship. Well, well, it's it's ambiguous. Ambiguous. <laughs> we're not there yet, and we're taking a break with this recap before our end game, and it hurts. Left on a big cliffhanger for both group one and group two. Yeah, I'm just I'm so one of the things that's been worrying me is that Aeson isn't going to make it past Eris. Something's going to happen. He's going to get found out, and he's going to get arrested, arrested, and possibly executed. So I, I, I don't know what to do yet. I, I haven't rolled up a second character or anything. So, uh, so we can see. You might. I mean, you are a dignitary. You are also a royal. I don't think they'd put you to death. They'd keep you for straight trading stock in case. Graydon ever were to get a hold of one of their royals, they could trade you. You'd probably be locked up into the dungeon, honestly. Yeah, and that would be that would be a time for Maggie because you know she. I don't know. It's just it's really hard for Maggie with everything going on because she knows she could see the chessboard from far away, but she can't see it all the way through. If that makes any well, sense. Aeson, Aeson let Maggie like risk herself by trying to get him any favors he'd be like nope just leave me in here i'll do my time is this where misty step this... problem comes in again <laughs> well no and the thing is is that maggie would would basically slap him through the bars and be like stop being a fucking martyr no it's not a martyr he wants to, he wants to make sure you don't end up in the dungeon next to him and if she was in the dungeon ha next to him that would be her choice I think Misty Step and stuff like that, I think as far as the kingdom, since they are the most expensive, they might have cells that ward against magic use. Magic you'd have to. You'd have to. Yeah, In this for, world, for you'd have to. No way, Willem. He would Misty Step again, into the cell to save Aeson and then try to Misty Step out and be stuck in there with him. 
Yep. And all you feel see is Maggie face palm. Ace on level. Oh, up and you guys have a strength of twenty, and then maybe he could. And you guys more. would see. You guys would see Maggie in her war- royal g- gowns. The real question is: is if war does break out, and say ground troops met ground troops, where would you guys be? Don't worry about it. Ace would be out trying to stop everything by helping the high king because there's a war and there's gonna be there's nothing he can do at this point to stop it himself Mm -hmm. and if he can help the high king stop this maybe he can put an end to the war maybe maybe things will get revealed maybe 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 they'll respect the high king's wishes maybe the high king will come and be like this is enough of this what was really going on was this and that you made a speculation earlier I'd like to tie into what you just said. You said earlier that you had speculated that the big bad had started all this yes. to slow you guys down. Yes. But what if, and, and I'm just being devil's advocate here because I already know the answer, but you, it, I don't, hmm, I'm not dropping anything. But you just said the High King might come out. What if his whole plan was to get the High King out of hiding? No. Could be. I mean, it would it would be a really good move on the chessboard. Yeah. Oh God. Make them reveal their king. Yeah, oh, it's no. a good move. Oh, it's a good like guys. You know, you guys... This, this oh my God. Go bad. Everything I'm sitting here. I... Oh my I God. Some, I'm. I do some Maxwell speculation right now. Pure, sure. Speculate speak. away. This is what this is what this is about. Purely speculatively speaking, the. The image in the crystal was Aeson standing over a dead king holding a sword in his hand and looking sorrowful. Now, it doesn't mean Aeson had to have killed anybody. And that sword might not have been his own sword. And I don't want that, Corey. I don't want that. You missed something in group two then. And this is what you lose out from not listening to the other groups. They saw something of you, Rodeo. Oh, no. Well, I see. I don't want to know. I want it to be a surprise when it happens to me. Here's the thing. When when I joined the podcast, I had listened to every episode up to that point. And then I didn't listen to any. Until after we finished the crossover, I went and listened to everything up to the crossover. Because then I was like, okay, they told me everything that went on. Now I can go back and enjoy it. And I can listen to it. And I can enjoy my friends point. listen to it. I can enjoy listening to Maggie and Winter, or, or uh, Red and Winter, and you and Gunny and all those great people. I can listen to them do a great job. But I like the surprise. Oh, I sure. like I like to just just be hit by it. <laughs> it won't hit the same if I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm laughing right now because of GLaDOS. I'm sorry. I, saw GLaDOS. I love GLaDOS. I don't fucking love GLaDOS. Don't think about it. 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 <laughs> but now you got me curious. You got oh, me. Cu- you got. Me? You have Maxwell curious because the group two saw something about Rode- or about Aeson in the crystal, <laughs> and I want to know, but I don't. So this is this is the glory about what can happen. I get to get your guys' brains twisting a little bit because I've been playing this for a while like a chess game. I've been placing things in the background. I know. I've been tying in slowly over time. I know. Um, I just got to the point of revealing why um, the random demon stole the staff from group two earlier in their campaign. Yeah. Um, I think I kind of have already explained to the listeners of why Dalesville is the way it is um, and how things have been kind of happening. So I can't wait to start tying things in for group one because there's a lot of mystery going on with your family, um, with people that you're you know kind of traveling with, with everything going on, not to mention just the war. <laughs> yeah. So listen, episode... I've been listening and I'm sitting there going like, you bitch, you moved it that way. You bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> what episode is the crystal bit in? 
in case I was planning to listen to it myself. Uh, it was it was way back with Myla. Um, she had been trying to get a full view of the crystal for a while, so it's kind of skipped over episodes. So if you're looking to just find one episode, I hate to tell you, Myla uh, kind of unfortunately had the unluckiness of the dice. And I just happened to throw books and get a nat 20. Hey, hey Jess, yes. uh, can, can I also say one last thing that I just want to, I want to bring up. Cause I think it was, what was it? Was it two days ago? Jasper was, uh, was Laura's birthday and we should all wish her a happy birthday. Oh yeah. Happy birthday. Cool. I was in happy one of her birthday. games that she did for her birthday. Early, earlier belated. Is it earlier belated? Belated. Belated. Belated, belated birthday. <gasps> Pigeon. Oh. And the wonderful, the wonderful and immensely talented, beyond words, Jasper, uh, helped me give her this for her birthday. Oh, that's pretty. Wow. You know, that's really cool. That background reminds me of. It's Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah, that's really good. I like how you use that background with this. That was when they were walking through Kroka going to the noble people's houses. I like that a lot. I am so proud of this image so much. I love it. She adored it, too. She she loved it, Jasper. Mm-hmm. She told her. What? No, there's a... Oh, oh. I would say... Um, let's see. So, final final tidbits. Let's Let's do some ending questions. Are there any small snippets of information or wires or threads to stories or maybe side quests that you think? I hope I see the end of it, or I hope I figure out what happened, or I hope we get to finish this. Do you guys have any fish? But I I really hope group one starts finding out more about Willem. Like, I I want that one scene. Because, because, like, there's all of these amazing um, plot plot lines going on right now. Like the like, all of these overarching things that have been happening since the beginning, and then this one little character comes in, and he he has such a deep backstory. And I want people to find out more about it a bit. Well, I'll, I'll prod for it in our fight scene. Yeah, we gotta. Well, that too, because if you guys travel northern. Um... You know, you you also know a bit about uh, the well, well, you call it a golf, but it's known as uh, Bruma the Lake. Golf of Bruma. Um, he had seven. So something that I would like to see um, a quest thing. I I don't. It's something that I think maybe is touched on. Very lightly in the podcast, but it was a main thing of my tryout with Sam. At mm-hmm. some point, I would love to to get back with Lynn. At some at some point, you know, it's, this could be way in the future. But we had yeah. we had outstanding business, perhaps <laughs> legal and royal, and also vigilante style with mm-hmm. some with a group of slavers and I forget what they were the called. Faded cloak. The faded the cloak. Faded cloak. Right. And they they've made a peep in group two. Yeah, because Lynn and Asan had a big run in with them and they did not like them. And Lynn and Asan Lynn and Asan actually I would say um for, for Asan's backstory for anybody listening who gives a gives a crap. Um Lynn and Asan were probably actually that's probably a second closest relationship out of anybody in all the other groups because they had to travel together for quite a while before they came across group two and it had just been the two of them traveling so they had gotten to know each other and they they were very very close and they were they were great friends and so the the departure from lynn and honestly from zachariah and milo as well they were all very group two was very close for the time they were together i call i with my group two Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it was. It's been hard on Asan. It's been. It's been adjusting to to making these new people. Um, it's it's been easier because he hadn't had to hide anything. Uh, that's the only thing he didn't like about his dragon friend was his dragon spilled the beans that he was uh, <laughs> was the prince, mm-hmm. and not just some random noble person. 
Um, but yeah, I would love to see more on that about because I know Lynn doesn't like them, and I know Asan doesn't like them, and that'd be something they would probably like to work on together at some point. Hmm. Well, um, we'll see how those tie in. I'm definitely going to say you will see what has occurred with them. You will see more of them. You will deal with them. I think both groups will. Um, I think there's more to the faded cloak than even we know about behind the scenes. So that'll be fun. Um, we got stuff for Willem coming up. I've definitely got more to introduce your character. I don't want you to get the short end of the stick because you really came into the season probably about midway. I, wish we had taken I came in very late. <laughs> Hey, and, but that's okay. Uh, no, I, I, I'm thinking that in our next episode we can do our fight scene because Asan probably gonna have he's probably gonna be one of those nights where he's having trouble sleeping again, and he might go bother Willem to talk because Willem will be the only one left inside, and then they could talk about that and they can do a backstory sequence and all that stuff. Oh, oh, and I, I like this. I like this. <laughs> I have then, ideas on how this can work. <laughs> all right, so I'll let you. I'll let you brainstorm it. I. Here's here's the thing. Asan will come up to to Willem and at, tell him, you know, I can't sleep, and you know, we've been traveling with you for a while, and I've realized I haven't gotten to know you. Something along those lines, and then they can do that, and then they can go into, hey, do you think you could teach me how to fight? I saw when you were beating the shit out of that troll or whatever, you know, and and then they could have their cute fight scene. I love that. I, I want so much. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Let's um, let's kind of wrap this up. We all want a happy ending, right? Everybody wants everybody in the story to potentially survive, not die, and find their happily ever after. Maybe even have kids, maybe okay. settle down. Maybe the rest of your adventure is yet to come. But what is the future that you have in your head oh. the perfect ending for your character? Did you not see the list of kid names that yep. I just posted I, about I, fucking Maggie I, and Asan's kids? Why I made the comment. <laughs> Maggie and Asan get married, and um, so I've been I've been thinking too um, as a plan for Asan what he wants to do when he's done if he becomes the king, which who knows what's going to happen. Is he's going to want to do his best to reestablish great relationships with both Eris and Truma, and even if it uh involves you know seeding a little bit of power that Graydon holds by just virtue of it being in the center and being in a very good area for farming and etc um to make it more of a a, a well at this point a, a, quad, a quad alliance because croca is becoming its own kingdom mm. and to make it so that it's not like four warring powers but four powers all together that work more as a you know uh a conf uh you know like uh what was it called what was the the native america the the confederation of the iroquois states or whatever something like that yeah the iroquois well, confederation you... something like Back. that here's a, here's another quick wrench too croak is not on that uh treaty yet so far My it's bitch. not been amended it's not been amended yet so croca could literally fall on either side of eris or great I know. So Asa, that's what Asan's goal would be to unify all th all three of them, or all. So all if them. if things in Eris go south, you can go north to Croca, solidified bonds, which would get you up there towards Hazel and closer to Bloom Lake for Willem. Potential new path. Oh, I mean that it could always go to the he'll he'll go to Hazel first, and then probably stop back in Croca because it's right there to gather supplies and see if he can't find anybody. And then head out to oh, Rickle because the thing that they need on there. And then after that, I have no idea. Maybe head back to Graydon, maybe go back to Eris, maybe find out something, anything. And basically follow, follow leads that we have at that point because I that's so far in the future. But... That would be Ace, and then at the end, Ace on marrying Maggie and them being a happy family with a bunch of kids <laughs> that we've already named. Yeah, her. yeah, we did. We just haven't figured out the middle names for like the last few kids, and I'm still having problems with it. It's but so the first two, the first two are an ode to all the people they love. 
Yeah. And Maggie didn't want the name of Charity to be the first name because that's Charity. So she was like, no, I'm going to, I want to give that middle name. I wanted Charity to be a part of, to live on. You know what I mean? And they named him after their parents and stuff like that. I might I might say though that we uh we switch around the Zachariah and Nicole for first two middle names. It just it just depends on what happens in the yeah. in their their travels because I have a feel Asan and Zachariah are, are, are close and there's there's a there's a thing that well, I, I got from yeah. from Zachariah um in real life. Um it was really cool. He 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 wrote a letter as Zachariah to Asan that um that my um uh, my ex who's a big fan of the podcast took from all the characters from group two and she transcribed uh, these letters onto script paper and then rolled them up and put them in a treasure chest for me. So I have actual real life letters from the characters of group two to Asan. And I gave you a letter for Christmas. I know you did. It's Maggie. It goes right uh, in there, and I love it. And I printed out that picture of us as Maggie and Asa. It's beautiful. So, um, what about Charity and Willem? Because, um, what's what's Willem's happy ending, or what's Charity's complete happy ending? So should I go first or should should Winter? It's up to you. Okay. So at at the moment in Willem's character, he doesn't know a lot about who he was before he was in an orphanage. So his happy ending would be like finding that out. I don't want to give too much away because that's important, kind of. And like him having that... um, that life um you know with with his past but also being able to come up to the surface and still like live shit (laughs) and still live his um still like adventure and be around people and i'd I'd like to uh, see um because he's not the kind of person who would just settle down in one place and like live live a life as a normal person. He'd still go out and he'd adventure everywhere. But I hope that after everything is everything is like over, um, he still retains his connections with like Asan and Maggie, and and I'd love to see him attend that wedding just like in the background. <laughs> um, other than that, I. I... <laughs> It really depends on, like, his relationship with everyone else throughout the thing. Because, like, I would love for him and Edmund to have, a, 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 like, a friendship. But that's Friendship difficult. romance. I see how that is in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we never know. Um, but, yeah. Calling and you, if, if they were friends, then I would I would like the happy ending to be them going on adventure, adventures and, like, stuff like that and stuff. Sorry, I'm not good. I haven't planned it very much. It's very central on like what happens in the campaign. That's for everybody's character. Anything, any, any of our endings can change a dime, uh, depending upon the information that we find. So I think that's a pretty solid ending. Okay. Um, how about charity? Really anticlimactic. I'm sorry. You guys have like such beautiful things charity's charity's gonna keep going until she i have i was about to say i was gonna tell you what i was hoping that maggie would hope that charity would do for her what what would maggie want maggie would want charity to be the the main high priestess of the the the, the temple of aphrodite in their town and she would want them to stay together forever because she loves charity that's really sweet um Charity to ask Charity to be, to be a high priestess before in Kroka, but she turned it down. She doesn't want to be one of the higher. She's like I don't know if I've portrayed this very well, but she's really humble about it. She's really like, oh no, I'm, oh yeah, I'm perfectly happy just being a priest. I like it. I can well, still perform ceremonies for people. 
but I don't want to be like in the public eye. I want to do things for my church. I like adventuring for my church. And finding... Well, and that's the main reason why Maggie wants that so badly is because she's so humble. That and she just wants to keep cha- she wants to give charity the life that she deserves. And she wants and she would want her to be like she would 100% tell the kids that that's her aunt. Like there is no there's and if they were like, oh well, she's a tiefling, you're a human, be like, yeah, that happens. It's adoption. She's my family. She's your aunt. She's she's my sister. You know what I mean? Oh, that's cute. Yeah, Chatty would definitely come around and like hang out and stay and visit people a lot. She'd probably make sure that anytime she wants to turn in a relic, instead of going back <clears throat> to Crocus, she'd probably come to a either great in our heiress, depending on where you guys end up. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, uh, she, and Maggie would respect that, but she would also want Charity to know that there's always a home for her where Maggie is. Always. That's so sweet. Because Asa uh, was going to probably at the end of this, assuming he's still alive, and assuming if he... Became, shut up. Assuming, he will kick you the teeth. I'll kick you the teeth. <laughs> The king of Graydon, that he would he would absolutely ask Charity to be one of his advisors, like his closest trusted people, because he already trusts her. And I just see that deepening as they travel together. Oh, I mean, Charity, Charity stood with him and healed him through the fight of the slime. Like she just came up and made sure he could keep going because I think I was the only one really getting hit by that damn slime. I was excited, excuse you. It was it was me and Flora were, were tanking all the damage from that slime, and I was doing the thing where I was taunting it so it hit me instead of other people. And then Charity just came up and was like, You can keep going, buddy. And Ace was like, Oh, this is your horn. Yeah, that was so, a really cute. <laughs> to, to kind of start wrapping this up, because we're going to start hitting a, a probably a hour or two and a hour and a half marker roughly or maybe two hours i don't know lost track of time here but uh, you guys currently have two npcs traveling with you right now and those two npcs are edmund and everett now we all know how we want things to end we all know the happy endings that we wish to give them but here's a moment for you to get maybe a little cynical maybe a little, a little dark or oh. maybe just stay cheerful. How I'm good at this. Think, how do you think these characters will end? Maggie, 100. I honestly see Maggie getting poisoned or stabbed in the night and killed. I meant just As, Everett and Edmund. Oh. Oh, I, I want to nice continue traveling with Charity, but that's just me. I want them both to keep traveling with Charity, actually, but that's not really fair for Edmund. So I kind of want Edmund to stay with. Uh, Maggie and Aeson would be like their little, their first baby. Oh. Well, and Maggie would give Edmund all of the things he needed to, you know, to uh, to study and do what he wants to do and be, uh, you know, do whatever he needs to do. Like, not everything he wants, because if we got everything we wanted, it would be a bad time. But you know what I mean? Um, but I thought you meant for our characters, and that's where I was going. And I'm sorry, I went cynical because uh, I was like, I 100% was like, oh yeah, Maggie's probably going to either get poisoned or stabbed in the back. And I 100%, oh not 100%, like about like 75% feel that she's going to die because she's going to start saying too too much, and she's going to start rustling feathers. She Better she not. Huh? I've actually Better thought about Edmund's cynical happen. ending. <laughs> yeah, you were just saying that Asan's gonna die. Asan's gonna die, no, and in the said, moment I, I he's going to, I said if he lives, because he's gonna okay. be out there trying to save the world. He might get stepped on by something big. It happened once before. It could happen again. This time, more effectively. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, <laughs> Maggie, right, I can see you. Sorry, sorry, Corey. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I think it's about time that uh, I want to say thank you guys for listening. Uh, for everybody who stuck through this and maybe have their own speculations. Um, if you guys want to share a few of them, go ahead and send them in. Maybe I might do an episode where I can read off a few other speculations or anything like that. That I don't know, maybe we get emails. I get emails from time. 
So please send us fan mail. I we I would love to yeah. do an episode where we could read fan mail and stuff from fans who like to listen to us. Hello again, opportunists. My name is Winter, and I play Charity, the Tiefling Cleric. I wanted to say thank you for listening to us. We hope you enjoy our episodes as much as we do. Don't forget to like and follow our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Special thanks to Purple Planet Music as we use their music for our ambience and sound effects. Also, thank you to Cobalt Press as we use some of their monsters to keep our games feeling lively. Again, just a huge thank you to you guys, our listeners, for enjoying this journey with us. And remember, keep your opportunities open.